Welcome to another tutorial on TwinCAD automation programming from ControlX Engineering. In today's tutorial, we'll learn about TwinCAD's controller functions and explore one such function block called TF4110 in particular, which is designed for use in both closed loop and open loop temperature control applications. Due to the depth of coverage required, this will be a two part series. Today, we'll review the controller and go over its features, functions, interface, and parameters. So let's get started. First things first, let's head over to Beckhoff's website and navigate to the product page. Once there, click on the automation software category. Here we will see the automation software components like TwinCat, TwinSafe, and various add-on software to link third-party software solutions with Beckhoff hardware and software. We will explore some add-on sol software solutions in future tutorials. Let's click on TwinCat. This is where all the hidden gems and features reside. Here we can see all the TwinCAD components. The engineering component names start with TE followed by four numbers. For example, TE1000 is the TwinCAD3 engineering environment. Similarly, the function names start with TF. Let's click on functions. TwinCAD3 is structured into distinct modules, each serving a specialized purpose. The engineering components of TwinCAD3 facilitate the configuration, programming, and debugging of applications, providing a comprehensive development environment. The runtime system is composed of core components and additional functional extensions. The core components deliver essential functionalities, which can be augmented by, with modular function packages to meet specific application requirements. There are functions for every aspect of industrial automation needs, as we can see here. Our focus in today's tutorial will be the TF4000 series functions. Here we can see the various controller functions available in TwinCAD. The TF4100 controller toolbox is also a useful um, function made available to us. It en encompasses all fundamental building blocks required for control applications. These blocks uh, feature a uniform interface and nearly identical properties, ensuring consistency. This consists of tools such as uh, basic closed loop controllers like PPI and PID controllers, filter blocks, ramp and signal generators, uh, limiters, PWM functions, and many more. We will cover these in future tutorials. The subject of today's tutorial is TF4110, which is the TwinCAD3 temperature controller. Navigate to the software download area under documentation and download section and download the executable. The complete documentation for the temperature controller can be found at Beckhoff Information System website. In order to use the TF4110 temperature controller function, the executable that we just downloaded must be installed um, on the TwinCAD XCR runtime IPC. This is where the PLC logic is executed. In addition, the appropriate license for using this function must be purchased from Beckhoff. But for testing and development purposes, we will make use of the seven day trial license, which grants us full access to the temperature controller for a period of seven days. For the purposes of this tutorial, the development environment or the XAE as well as the runtime or the XAR are on the same computer, which can be a laptop or a virtual machine. For me, this is a virtual machine. Therefore, I'll be installing the TF4110 executable on this VM. If you're using a backoff IPC as the runtime, then this must be installed on the backoff IPC. OK, let's open TwinCAT and start a new TwinCAT project. Add a new PLC project and select standard PLC project. Give it an appropriate name. I'll call mine TC underscore PLC. This adds the PLC project to our solution. Expand the project part and navigate to references. This is where we'll add the library for the TF4110 uh, that we had installed using the downloaded executable file. Right click on references and select add library. This will open the library dialog box. Navigate to controller and install both uh, the TC2 temperature controller and the TC2 controller toolbox libraries one at a time. The two libraries should now show up in your references. At this point, we can activate our blank project. If you're running this in a virtual machine like I am, make sure to check the isolated core under the real time settings. Since we are in settings, let's take a look at our licenses. Click on license and we notice that the TF4110 license is automatically applied because we added the library to our project. For this tutorial, we can make use of the free trial license in TwinCAT. Click on the seven day trial license button, enter the security code shown and click OK. 
you may now use the temperature controller function for seven days. And this can be uh, repeatedly reactivated for recurring seven days. Pretty cool. Now that we have this sorted out, let's move on to exploring the contents of the temperature controller library. Go back to the reference section in the PLC project and navigate to the temperature controller library. Double click on the library. This will open the library manager, uh, which will show the contents of the selected library. Here we can see its contents arranged in folders such as data types, global variables, POUs, etc. Go ahead and expand the POU folder. This is where we will find the logic for the controller as well as the various other uh, useful function blocks. Backoff has provided two versions of the controller, namely v1 and v2. Go ahead and expand v2. Here we will find the main temperature controller function block. Select the controller. This will display its contents on the right hand side in various formats. Click on the graphical tab to visualize the controller graphically. This is the graphical representation of the controller. It is a universally applicable PLC uh, function block for monitoring and controlling a wide variety of temperature dependent processes. The controller can be operated in both automatic or closed loop as well as manual or open loop modes. The control value can be accessed in digital or analog form. The digital form uh, value is a pulse width modulated signal and perfect for firing solid state relays for heaters. A two point or three point output is also available. The controller value is limited to the permitted maximum and minimum values as defined using parameters, which we will cover shortly. Similarly, the set point can also be limited to permitted minimum and maximum values, which can also be ramped. A bit is available in the interface uh, to the function block that provides easy switching from the actual set point to a standby set point. A soft start can be parameterized to support heater baking. This involves the set point, uh, which can also be ramped, being initially set to a low value, remaining there for a certain period of time, and then change to the true set point, which can again be ramped. The actual value can be digitally filtered. The control algorithm is PID based, and additional pre-controller can also be inserted in order to minimize overshoot. The function block has several inputs and outputs as shown here. Some of them are the familiar um, IEC data types like Boolean, long real, uh, etc., while others are custom enumerations and structures, which we will look into more detail later in this tutorial. As the controller's parameters are passed to it via structures, uh, let's review the interface in more detail. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm always creating tutorials covering various aspects of control system design and PLC related topics. E-Control mode is a custom enumeration and allows the controller to switch into various operating modes from idle, active, manual, and so on. There are also modes to allow automatic tuning as well as self-testing. Configuring this connection is necessary for the controller to work. FW1 is the desired temperature set point of type long reel. The unit for the temperature uh, measurements is in degrees Celsius. FW2 is an optional input for standby uh, temperature set point. It is usually set smaller than FW1. And when the input B cell set point is true, the controller switches to the standby set point. Use of FW2 is ap application dependent and is completely optional. FX is the actual or feedback value which is necessary for the closed loop controller action. It is of uh, long real data type and expected units are degrees Celsius. The feedback, also known as the process value, can be brought into the PLC by means of thermocouples, for example. We can make use of back of IO terminal like EL3318 to get the process temperatures using thermocouples. Note that the data type for this terminal uh, is usually of integer data type. So the scale temperature must be converted to long real before connecting to FX. All tuning parameters to the controller are passed by means of the para controller parameter structure. Here the PID control parameters for both heating and cooling can be assigned. All general parameterization of the controller are passed to the function block through the structure. Uh, these parameters can either be specified by using initial values or assigned in the PLC logic. Let's explore the, the structure in more detail next. Since this structure contains a lot of parameters, we will review them as groups. First, let's look at the general parameter group. The input I mode determines the controller operation mode. We can make the selection based on our application. Some applications only require active heating, while some require both heating and cooling. With this parameter, we can specify the action to take during controller failure. Uh, the input action can be specified based on one of the available enumerations shown here. We can either select no action or stop the controller on, on error 
or switch from active mode to manual mode, for example. This bit allows selection of tuning parameters to the controller. When set to false, it will use the internal parameters which are determined by performing a tuning. If you want the controller to use externally provided tuning parameters, then set this bit to true. This double word input allows masking of alarms. For example, uh, this mask value is for open temperature sensor alarm. Alternatively, setting all bits to one will suppress all alarms. The complete list of bit masks is available in the do controller documentation. This input is for specifying the controller sampling time in seconds. The controller will use this time to sample input uh, feedback value, evaluate the PID controller, and calculate the outputs. Using this input, we inform the controller of the PLC task cycle time. The controller function block is called with this time interval. Now let's look at the tuning related parameters. The first one is the tuning method. It is an enumeration that specifies the selected tuning method. One of several methods can be used based on uh, for tuning depending on the application. This parameter specifies a varying time in seconds to determine the tuning stability. The time must be specified using the time format as shown here. This parameter specifies the percentage value of the set point from which the controller switches to closed loop during tuning. This parameter specifies a step change in control uh, value during tuning. This parameter specifies the control value when switching to tuning during the heating period. As with the heating parameter, this one specifies the percentage value of the set point from which the controller switches to closed loop while cooling. And this parameter specifies step change in control value during tuning on the cooling side. This parameter specifies the control value when switching to tuning during cooling. And this is the scaling factor for parameter switching if no tuning is performed for cooling. These are the set point and startup related parameters. FW min and max are the minimum and maximum allowed set point values. For example, if you set these to say 200 and 300, then these will become the clamping values. Any value lower than 20 or higher than 300 will be clamped to these values. This input, if set to true, enables soft start. This is a feature that gradually ramps up the power to the heating element instead of applying full power immediately. This control startup reduces mechanical and electrical stresses, minimizing wear and tear on the equipment and extending its lifespan. This input specifies if ramping is required. This is an optional set point for startup. As soon as the controller is set to active, the controller will go uh, to this set point and stay there for the specified duration. The ramp can be enabled by setting the start startup ramping bit to true. And the positive and negative ramps can be specified using the startup velocity positive and negative inputs. One useful implementation of this feature is for soaking. See, the startup temperature is set to 80 degrees for 30 minutes. As soon as the controller becomes active, the output will try to get to 80 degrees, regardless of user set point. Once the 30 minute elapses, then the output will go from 80 to the user set point. This process is called soaking and ensures that the material reaches a uniform temperature throughout. If this feature is not required, just leave these settings to zero. For normal set points, these uh, two inputs specify the gradient for increasing and decreasing set points or rate of rise and rate of fall for the set points. Usually analog signals like the ones we get from the thermocouple for the actual temperature measurement are susceptible to noise. These settings allow a filter to be implemented to smoothen the input signal. The B filter Boolean activates the filter for the feedback temperature. And using T filter, you can specify the time constant for the first order filter. These settings allow user to set a dead band in degrees Celsius and the Boolean enables or disables the dead band function. These are the clamping limits of the analog output, also known as control value. You can use these settings to limit the control value within certain min and max values, depending on your application. You can use this input when the controller is switched to manual mode, and you can specify the uh, output control value manually using this input. This is the optional control value uh, during a controller fault. These settings are for the PWM output of the controller. In most cases, solid state relays are used to control the heater elements by using pulse width modulated signals to precisely control the temperature. Using these settings, you can specify the PWM cycle time, minimum switch off times and on times, waiting time when switching from heating to cooling. These are the inputs for a three-point control to specify the switch off and on threshold percentage. This is an integer value that specifies the number of cycles for transition from one primary set to another.
Among the controller settings, let's cover the important ones. This bit switches on the control value filter uh, following the main controller. You may recall that the control value is the output of the controller that controls the actual process. This setting allows the uh, selection of the filter type from one of two types as specified by this enum. Uh, the enum data type allows the selection of the required control algorithm. For most standard temperature control systems, either a PI or PID control algorithm should be okay. These parameters control the settings for generating alarms when the temperature deviates too much. Here we can set three levels of alarms for both high and low thresholds. Now let's look at the controller outputs. This is the control value um, in analog form. It can be scaled from a scale of 0 to 100 by setting the FY min and max parameters of the controller parameters that we just reviewed. These are the control value outputs in digital form and can be used to control solid state relays uh, by using uh, pulse width modulated output control. The on and off timing of the digital output controls the duty cycle of the PWM signal. The positive and negative outputs are, are used for heating and cooling respectively. If your application only does heating, then just use the positive PWM output to control the heating SSRs. These two digital outputs indicate if the controller is actively heating or cooling. The positive output stays true when controller is heating, otherwise it remains false. Similarly, the negative output stays true when the controller is cooling, otherwise it remains false. This is an alarm output of data type double word. Specific alarm types can be suppressed using the um, alarm suppression double word in the general parameters that we reviewed. When a new set point is entered, the controller sets its output to get the process value to reach the set temperature. As in the case with PID control, there is always some overshoot after which the control value corrects itself. This output records the maximum overshoot. This is the amount of time it takes for the process value to reach the desired set point. Every time a new set point is entered, this output will update the startup time. Uh, this output indicates the current state of the controller. The state can be set using the e-control mode input that we discussed earlier. Once the input has been accepted, the output mode is updated to reflect the current state of the controller. Using this structure, the controller's internal tuning parameters, which were determined during tuning, can be accessed. And this bit becomes true when the controller is actively faulted. The exact error code is indicated by the error ID. Now that we have covered the basics of the temperature controller function block, coming up in part two of this tutorial, we will look at the implementation of the controller for a multi-zone temperature control application. We will see how to set up multiple instances of the controller with both heating and cooling method con control methods. We will parameterize the controllers and use the self-tuning feature to auto-tune them. After tuning, we will run the controllers independently in both heating and cooling applications. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or suggestions about today's video, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future tutorials. As always, thank you for watching and keep innovating.